In this video, we're going to focus on how to display JavaScript object values in HTML. So, first of all, what we need is we need to have a default code for that. I'm going to recommend you to go to charges3.com, getting started, and then scroll down here and just copy this entire code. So don't worry, we're not going to create a chart, but we're going to copy this default code because I need a default setting. So I'm going to just paste this all in here. And then what I will do is I just cut this out, put it in there. All right, and then what I'm going to do is we're going to delete a lot of code here. Everything in the JavaScript will be removed. We don't need all of this. We will be making our own code. Next, we don't need this JavaScript library of chart.js. And finally, the canvas can be removed as well. This we can remove as well, doesn't matter. All right, save that, refresh. There we are. So now we have this code. And the most important thing here in my case is I want to make sure you have a default setting as well so because then it's easier to show and to follow along so now we have a default layout of an html file so what we're going to create now is the next is create the objects itself so to make it very simple i'm going to just give it a uh, simple name but say constant and then we can say here products and these products here is a certain object then we're going to say here um the first one will be id and this id is just the number so the id1 and then we say here product name or brand let's say here uh, nestle milk and then we have make sure you have a comma here next one would be maybe the uh, price and the price will be uh, 100 your currency or uh, one dollar it doesn't matter anything you want so and then finally here uh, i have no idea maybe the uh, quantity and the quantity can be one liter so i'm going to put in there one liter there we are so once i did this this is only one but usually with an object we have multiple so we're going to create an array bracket or basically an array out of it so we say here this is a bracket and then i'm going to give this here an indentation and then i'm going to put a comma here and then what i want to do now is i want to put in the next one and the next one so we have now three items so we have here nestle milk and the other one can be fresh cow milk and uh, like two two liters and this one will be uh, 150 and then finally we have chocolate milk or milo chocolate milo milk let me say this is 50 because this is only 500 milliliter all right so now we have this, if I save this now, and if I do here a very simple console log, it will show us the products. So if I save this, refresh, doesn't show us here, of course, but in our console log or in developer tab in the console, we can find here all the information we just have created. So what I want to do now is I want these brand names and I want the price to be reflected on here in a paragraph and what i want to do is on a paragraph and then a line and then a paragraph and then a new line etc etc so we're going to look through this so how can we do this all right so for this what we need to do is basically a for each loop so that's the first thing we're going to do you're going to say here uh products which is the array name so if you're wondering this is the products array name dot and then or basically object name basically we're working out an object so this is an object name and then we say here, for each item in this object, what I want to do is the following. I want to have a breakdown here. I have here double parentheses. This is I do on purpose. And then what I will say here, I want to grab the product. The product is basically the shorthand for products. All right. So basically this and this is identical. But you can imagine we could also go specifically for certain items. But anyway, that will be too deep. Uh, what I want to do is just only this. Yes, because I want to loop through all of these one by one. And then I will say next one is also the index. The index can be important as well, although we will not be using this. Throw the braces here. And then in here, what I'm going to say is the following. What I can do here, for example, now, just simply, if I do here console log and then grab here now the product, and then I say here dot ID. And if I save this, basically I'm going to grab the IDs of every one of them and I loop through this. If I refresh here now, you can see it one, two, three. We can even say here, we put a string and plus, so concatenation. Then we say here, ID, there you are. So now start to show, but I want to show this in here. And I don't want the ID, what I want is basically, I want the brand. 
be specific I want the brand here so like that there you are now we get all these brands all right so how do we get them now first of all to get them in the question is where are we going to insert it in which div are we going to insert so in our case I'm going to use this chart box div and this is the reason why I wanted you to, to have here as well the same setup so we have this class and this is specifically a class later on I'm going to show you as well how you do this in ID so just here above we're not going to do it in the for loop because I want you to have this item first or this constant must be created and this constant will be a reference to this specific ID here so I'm going to say your constant, and I will call this the chart box, which is the class name. As you can see here, exactly the same writing. And of course, you can choose how you want to write that. But uh, it's more easier if you have everything consistent. And then I'm going to say your document dot. And this document basically means go search in the HTML document, which is this or specifically here. And then what we're going to say here, get elements by class name and the class name will be called chart box so once we do this you will see something if I do a console log here and let's comment out this we don't need this products and then let me just hide this as well we don't need that we get this and save this so if I do this we get here an HTML collection and this is basically what we call a note but this note as you really look at it carefully is an index it's basically an array here and the reason why is because we could have more than one class with the same name. So if we were to have another one, we could pinpoint that one as well. So if I let me show you by just adding up another one here, just save that, refresh. And now you can see we have two. And you can see here it recognizes we have two of these. However, and this is very important. But of course, for now for class, we only want to focus on the single one. And because this is now index zero, we need to specify index zero or else we get an error meaning the following here so if I want to do here I do here index 0 that's the first one then we get here this specific one which if I hover over it there you are you can see it recognizes this so this is very important so now we have this and what we need to do basically in this chart box we want to insert text so that will mean I need to create now we have this item here but I want to create a paragraph we want to insert the text. So what I'm going to do here is the following. In this for loop, we want to create a paragraph for every item. So for every product, there should be an individual uh, uh, paragraph. So that would mean that eventually we have three items. It should be three, three separate paragraphs. So I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say here, and I'm going to use the let value here. Why? Because we're in a, in a loop, and let would be more appropriate. Now I'm going to say in let. I'm going to call this the item P, which is the item paragraph. And what I'm going to say here is document dot create element. And then here, I'm going to create the P. And I'm using here a capital letter. You can use small letter. I tend to use this as a habit, but doesn't matter. A small paragraph doesn't matter. Anything you want. Because here, this here, P, stands for the paragraph. So which element, and if you're wondering what is an element, an element is basically these tags here. We call them elements or syntax. There's multiple names for that. But in this case, we want the element of the P. All right. So once we do this, and we're going to have this here, it is not yet created, or it is created, but it is nowhere positioned. Because now we want to say, hold on, I want to insert the paragraph in here. So basically, I want to do this. This is what we're going to do. A paragraph here, and then here, milk, or whatever that product was, Nestle milk. Nestle, uh, yeah, that's all right. Nestle milk, and then here 150 uh, currency, whatever your currency is. So this is what I want to do, and I want to loop this multiple times. So that would mean if we have this item here created, we want to insert it in what we call the parent element, and the parent element is in this case the chart box with the class name of chart box. This one here specifically index zero. So what I'm going to say here is the following. Let's get the parent, which is chart box dot, and then we say append, and append means to attach. So we're going to attach, attach the child element to the parent. So then we say, all right, what is the child, or append child, capital C, and here we're going to select here, and this 
must be a variable because we're going to grab this one here. So no no quotations, or else it would be a string. We don't want that. So once we do this, if I save this now, refresh, all right, we get this. Of course, this is uh, unfair because we have this one here. Save that, refresh. Now let's look at this here. Now we look at this chart box and we can see here, we have this comment out, but we have these three elements already in here, except there's no text yet. Let's put in the text. So now to do the text here, we have this here, but all we want to do now is the text needs to be added in the paragraph. So how do we do that? <coughs> oh, sorry. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing, what we're going to do here is we're going to say here, item P and then, oh, of, of course, no, not that. First of all, you need to create what you call a text node. So I'm going to say item P text equals. And then we're going to say here, document dot create text node. So a text node is basically this. This is even a class here, also a text node. These are, or sorry, not a, not a text node, it's a node itself. And a node is very similar to an array, but it's not an array. Basically, it is more all the details of a specific element. Because this is very important. When you have all this information here of the element, that is what we can call a text node. So this is very important, sorry, not a text node. That's, those are nodes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to include a text node, which is basically a child of the paragraph, and same as as well like a class. A class is also considered a node, which is a child of that specific element. So anyway, that's very complicated, so don't worry about that, doesn't matter so much. But all we want to say here, the text here is basically this. Well, first make a simple one, we're going to grab here the product brand, which is product dot brand. Remember, we don't need to use products because we're in the for loop here. So product dot brand, and then here, what I'm going to do now is we're going to do the following. I'm going to say here the item paragraph is the father, or the, sorry, not the father, but the parent, because it could be male or female, the parent of the item P text. So once we append them together, so we put in the whatever the text is in the paragraph, and then the paragraph will be added into the chart box. If I save this now, refresh, we get now all the items here. Beautiful. So what I want to do now is final one is here to do a simple concatenation because what I want as well is not only this, as I said earlier, we want brand name plus column space and then price. So what I'm going to do here is what we call a uh, temp for an object, sorry, template literals. That's the right term, sorry. Which means we're going to use backticks. If you want to wear backticks, below your keyboard or on your keyboard, below the escape button, you have backticks. So they are not uh, sync quotations. They are different. Remember that. And what I'm going to do here is dollar sign, curly braces. And the reason why, because this is a variable, we need to do this. And then what I'm going to do here is the following. We can do here colon, space, and then we can get another variable. So what's the other variable? Well, instead of product brand, I can get now product price. But this is a variable again. So dollar sign, curly braces, and then closing curly braces here. And of course, if you want to have here, uh, let's say a dollar sign for the price, because maybe you say, well, this is one dollar and this is only 50 cents. And this one is one dollar. All right, in that case, what you can do is in here, of course, another dollar sign here. So it might look confusing, but you can see this one is being recognized as a string value. Well, this one here knows it is related to this variable here. So if I save this now, refresh, all right, we get it now, all of this, but we're not done yet. The reason why we want to have still a line underneath. So in this case, I'm going to use a horizontal line. And you probably figured out now how we're going to do that. Basically this, I'm going to say here, enter, let, and I'm going to say here, uh, item HR equals document dot create element. And I'm going to say here, HR, which is the horizontal line. So then, when we have that here, what I want to do is I want to add up the horizontal line after the paragraph here. You can see here we have this paragraph. Oh, sorry, not in here, but after the chart box paragraph. So what I want to do is I want to add this one in the chart box. First, we draw or we create and append the paragraph. 
with the text and afterwards I want to get the horizontal line. So I'm going to say append child do this there semicolon say refresh there we are and now we have this one here and now for example let's say we, we have expanded our entire product list with a new item and a new item could be well number four and then we say here uh, uh, water bottle and this water bottle is one dollar and it's a uh, I guess one liter, it should be one liter, let's say here 500 milliliter. That's fine. Save, refresh. There we are. So now we have this here nicely. So we can even continue on adding more. So this is basically how you can do it with your class. So if you're wondering how do you do them with the ID, well, all we have to do here is we're going to change this, get element by ID. ID, and then here will be the ID of the chart box. I'm going to remove this because now we don't have any more multiple classes because an ID is unique and unique means you can only have one of those so if there's not more if there's more it's not unique so we have once we have this of course we need to just change copy this change that here into an ID save that refresh all right get element by ID is not a function uh, all right of course so the reason why is get element by ID is not elements so pay attention with the writing and there we are so of course now our CSS is matched with a class name of chart box. So that's why we're missing here basically the design here. We could convert this into 90. There we are. Now back to original state and now it looks perfectly. And this is how you can play with the objects, displaying objects. And you can do all kinds of things here. And of course you could be able to, to add more HR. You can do even a list item here as well. You can be very creative.